had really enjoyed my first year on the island lake and uh, was keen to get back on there again. I actually missed the start of the season this year. Trips away of course are up and running again so I was away in France when everyone gathered up for the draw and did the first week's fishing. As soon as I was home my attentions were turned once again to my local lakes and uh, yeah, I couldn't wait to get back down there again. Well here we are, uh, again all loaded up, boats packed up with about as much gear as I can fit on it. I was expecting it to be quite busy so I was pleasantly surprised when there weren't too many people there. Although the first island where I was hoping to get on, most of the swims were taken on that. There was only a couple left. Yeah I ended up going for the, the channel swim which is, it's not an easy swim, it doesn't produce a great deal of fish, but I had had a good result in there the, the year before, so I knew a few good little spots, and uh, yeah, I was fairly confident, and it was just nice to be back on there. But apart from the planes, it did end up being a quiet first night. Well, did last night in a channel swim and didn't see anything, didn't hear anything. Found a couple of nice spots to fish on, but um, that was about it. Had a, a restless night's sleep with the planes, as you can hear. Oh, they, do my head in the planes, never get used to them. I'll talk to you when this one's gone over. Anyway, it was busy yesterday when I arrived. Um, there was only a couple of swims left on the first island, so that was the reason for going in the channel. And woke up this morning, had a cup of tea, and a quick look around to find I was everyone had gone, basically. I was the only one left on the first island. Put a bit of gear in the snags, thought I'd have a a good look first and bumped into a load of fish out there in the uh, all alone so quickly grabbed me here and I've moved in here now and I did spook the fish because I wasn't expecting to find them there but um, yeah found a group of about 10 fish out there a couple of decent ones as well so rods are out on the fish so we'll see what happens it always pays to look always pays to look around you never know what you're going to find but you normally find something and uh, yeah I have so fingers crossed I mean all alone gave me my first island lake carp uh, last year so let's see if it can do it again this year let's hope so Well, the swan was being a bit of a nuisance on the right hander, but the middle rod's just gone hammering off. God, tense moments. Didn't take long, did it? Only a couple of hours, I reckon, but saw the fish out there, and uh, we've got one 19 pound. Certainly not the biggest that I saw out there, but nice to get one. First one of the year from the island lake. Mwah.
yeah it was certainly nice to be back amongst the fish for sure and yeah it was pretty peaceful there, w there wasn't many people about and as the name suggests the all alone you don't get many visitors there but one that was very welcome was the local robin who was one of the most friendly robins i've ever known he was in the bivy all the time and i even managed to get him to sit on my hand at one point i was still seeing fish out in the spot so it wasn't really much of a surprise when i got a couple more fish another really nice scaly high double and a, a mid-20 common but the best was yet to come well it's about quarter to six in the morning and i've just got the rod back out and the kettle on because i've had one all night um, that's the time when I was expecting to get a bite really and nothing happened after the previous action it seemed to have gone really quiet and then out of the blue this morning the middle rods gone hammering off and uh, yeah I've had a, a really nice one 4112 mirror absolute cracker which was a real surprise because it seemed like mainly the the smaller fish around this area, even though I had seen a couple of better ones, um, it seemed like it's a bit, a bit of a shallower part of the lake, and uh, mainly the smaller ones seem to be around. That's what I was catching anyway. But I've got a good one, which is really nice. Really happy with that. So it's just down to the side there in the sling for a little while, just waiting for it to get a bit brighter. In the meantime, cup of tea to celebrate, but very, very happy with that. What a lovely start back. Thank you, Island Lake. One of its finest. Okay. Well, how good is that? First session back in England and an absolute cracker. 41.12. Beautiful that, settle for that. God, I did wonder if I was gonna get a bigger one. Saw a couple out there, but uh, it was the little ones I was getting until this morning and this one come along well happy with that first proper UK session of the year and a cracker like that Creeping here as quietly as I can. Just engine on bare minimum. Of course I couldn't wait to get back down there again. So following week I was back on the lake and I was in a swim called Snags 2. There was a few people about. Snags 2 was free. Not a swim I'd caught from before, but I did find a few fish. I did find a nice little spot to fish and I did catch one from it. Not a big one, small common. Pretty typical for the lake, but I was happy to get one. The following day, however, Snags 1 became free, and that was a swim that I definitely wanted to fish. I, could, I never managed to get in it the year before. Uh, knew it was a good swim, so jumped in there straight away. It couldn't have started much better, really. Within a couple of hours, I had this absolutely clonking 34 pound common on the bank. 
So that was a really good start and I was looking forward to the next couple of nights that I had to go on the lake. Unfortunately, as I was photographing that fish, a text message come through that the lake was actually being shut for spawning, which I was absolutely gutted about. But what can you do? The lake was shut, so I had to pack the gear up and head off back home. My attentions were turned once more to fishing abroad again and I had some really good trips. We went off to see friends in Germany and had a couple of sessions in France catching really good fish from both of them. But it was always on my mind that when I got back in the UK and when I had a bit of time on my hands I really wanted to get back over the island lake, albeit some six or seven maybe eight weeks later. That was the next chance I had to get down there but I was determined to make the most of my chances. Well, managed to get into Snags 1, but in actual fact, when I got here, there was only one other guy on the lake, everyone else has packed up, so I think the, the weekends have been busy, but after that, it's been fairly quiet, so never managed to get in that swim at all last year, at least when I needed to be in there, um, but I've had a couple of goes now this year, oh, they just never stop, do they? I mean, from the swim itself to the snags, probably 60, 70 yards, it's not very far, it'd be an easy cast, but it's so much better with the boat, and I'll, well, I'll show you why. There's a fair bit of weed down there, for, well, there's loads of weed down there, but the overhang from these trees is huge. It comes out a long way from the bank, and the best bit of all, is what I'm going to show you here because it's like going through the wardrobe door into Narnia going through here literally although it don't look like there's anything the boat goes through here <laughs> and in here is another world I saw a big mirror in here yesterday. I just thought I'd check this out. I was going to fish one of the swims further up the lake, one or two of those, but I just thought I'd check this out first and came in here and wedged the boat in here just like this. And uh, after a couple of minutes, I saw a little common, a little common came in here, circled about. And after that, a big mirror just came in came right underneath the boat here, circled around here and sort of just drifted out over there so that was good enough, that was good enough for me so came straight in here. Yeah it's a carp hideaway heaven isn't it in here and I'm right in underneath now it, I mean it looks an absolute nightmare but um, you know if it was that dangerous they wouldn't let you fish here for a start but um, the takes I've had and I've seen other people get in here it's amazing how easily you get the fish out there's plenty of other lakes where I fish snaggy areas where it's a lot more difficult to get them out than what it is from here they underneath all of this although it looks like a jungle underneath below the surface it is actually mostly clear it's clear water and so when you do hook one you know it's obviously hit and hold tactics you hold on tight walk back with the rod but now I did come over with the aim of putting a bit more bait in um, but I can still see all the boilies down there on the bottom so uh, yeah I'm not going to I'm not going to do anything I can can't see the pellet as such but 
Yeah, I need the viewing scope really to see properly, but I can certainly see all my boilies down there and the perch, perch is wandering about. Sometimes you come over and they've cleared all the bait out, but it, at the moment it's all still there. So I'm not going to do anything, I'm just going to creep back out and uh, leave it as it is. That's the other spot for me, just in there at the moment. It's quite quite a bit of weed down there, but there's a little clear spot just in there. Lovely little spot that. And then, yeah, this is just about the boundary to the swim. Island Lake Mirror, nice dark one, and there's a few fish about. I see a big one in there yesterday, so just hoping he's still about. But there we go, a couple of bites anyway. The Mirror was actually the second fish I caught that trip after the obligatory little common. It's only about seven o'clock in the morning, but I'm on the move. I had the feeling yesterday evening I, I should have moved, but it was a bit too late to do it. But I'd been out and uh, checked my rods over there and all the bait was still there. And it just had a different feeling. The wind changed round. It's gone from a southwesterly to a northwesterly. So it's blowing up the other end. And there's no one up there. So I'm going to go up in the plateau swim. The plan was to move sort of midday-ish. But I just looked at the weather forecast and uh, there's a band of rain moving in that's going to get heavier up to around sort of midday, early afternoon. So, yeah, basically I'm better off if I'm going to move, I'm better off doing it now. Getting set up and getting the rods out before it starts raining. So, that's what I'm doing. I've had a couple of fish from here anyway, so, so it's been alright. But, um, yeah, I don't think they're here now. Well, time for a move anyway, time for a, a change of swim. Right, well it's not far to go anyway. I haven't bothered tying any of the gear down or anything. I mean, it's literally just round the corner there, really. Mm. 
nice and quiet up this end. No one up here at all at the moment. I expect that to change. I expect Dave uh, be moving up this way later, but um, oh, there we go. We'll give this a go anyway. Oh, something just better have a look at that through there. Thought I'd just see something show through the the gap swim, so I better pull up in here and uh, I'll have a look anyway. Because that is another option. Yeah, this swim is it's only just through the back here, so it's not far away. Not really fish this. Oh, call that fizzing out there. Now then. Now that's interesting. Don't know if you can see that, there's a load of fizzing going on out there. there. Wow. Oh, decisions. Oh, it's definitely a load of fish here. There's so much going on behind. I've got to have a go around there. Absolute load of fish. There must be 20 fish there fizzing up. Easy does it. <laughs> Don't want to go swimming. We've just got to go through Dingley Dell. Last year when fish were in this gap swim, I actually disturbed fish in the channel here as well. Oh well, this is it. I suppose first thing, just get the rods out. I'm just going to sneak out and literally drop the rods where they're fizzing. I don't know what the bottom's like. I'm expecting plenty of weed there. But if they're feeding there, then they can find a hook bait there, so that's all I'm going to do. Just sneak out there quick and, and drop them where the fish are. done there is literally come out and find a, a spot that isn't weed or weeded up there's I mean there's loads of weed out here uh, and that is a really soft silty bit of bottom but importantly it's it's clear of weed so that's roughly the area where they've been fizzing out here so yeah that's good enough I, I mean I've caught fish on here on hard bottoms, soft bottoms, all, all sorts of bottom really and uh, it seems like as long as you can find a clear spot where the fish are you're in with a shout and so well there we go it's clear and it's sort of where fish have been so we'll see what happens I've got the rods out as quietly as I could do it. I mean, it's impossible to do it really quietly. 
<sighs> but I've done it. There's still fish fizzing out there, so they haven't all bolted for the horizon anyway at the moment. So looks good anyway. Looks really good. baby one I'm sure there's bigger ones out there but um, it didn't take long less than an hour that's been out there but there's fish fizzing everywhere out there and there's still some getting liners as well so uh, hopefully there's more to come but um, yeah good move anyway wasn't it there we go Well, done the most important thing. Made a cup of tea, that's the first job. I should have had one, but um, yeah, don't look like a bad move at the moment. There's still fish, they're not fizzing like they were when I first came in here, they were literally going for it like a good one. But um, there are still patches of fizz coming up all over the place, so they're still out there, still getting liners. So, yeah, hopefully there's more to come, but um, there's quite a few fish in this area and I don't know, it's it's normally the last area I look at and uh, yeah, Dave's, I think Dave's got in the shop, he's moved in the swim behind me and didn't even realise I was in here, <laughs> didn't look round here and uh, he tried to call me but that was when I had to take and uh, had to go out and play the fish so, and I went round to see him and he's he's gone so I think he's gone to the shops but um but yeah, great minds think alike and all that. We, we've both had a move up this end. No one else up this end at all. Um, but there's certainly a, a few fish up here. Only got one night left, so I'm just hoping that if I can get another one, it's one of the better ones. I had three fish now this trip, which is, is good like action-wise, but they've all been small fish. So yeah, I'd just like a better one, really. Just to top it off, that would... Uh, turn a good session into a great one if I could just get a, a decent fish like a 30 plus or something like that
but that is a nice surprise. Just sitting here chatting with Dave, saying you never get afternoon bites on here. And uh, half past three in the afternoon, <laughs> off it's gone. And uh, proper solid chunky fish, 30 pound 10 ounce. Bigger than what I thought it felt heavy, but it, it's just so short and stocky. But yeah. Caused the kettle had to go on to celebrate, didn't it? <laughs> yeah, that was all I needed after that, a cup of tea. That was all I wanted, a 30 pounder, and I've got a 30 pounder. So yeah, it was job done really. I was going into the last night, not long left. Um, maybe just hoping to get one more fish. Plane's already on the go. It's far too early for me to be up. Um, yeah, one more fish. Very long, spawned out. 24 pounder. There we go. Probably be the last one. Still getting line there's so there's a chance on one of the other rods. But there we go. Good session. Good move yesterday. There's three fish now from here. 